Bill Cosby, Wikipedia article audio. William Henry Cosby Jr. is an American stand-up comedian, actor, musician, and author. His start in stand-up comedy began at The Hungry Eye in San Francisco, he then landed a starring role in the 1960s television show I Spy. He was also a regular on the children's television series The Electric Company during the show's first two seasons. Early Life Stand-up career Using the Fat Albert character developed during his stand-up routines, Cosby created, produced, and hosted the animated comedy television series Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, a show that ran from 1972 to 1985, centering on a group of young friends growing up in an urban area. Throughout the 1970s, Cosby starred in a number of films, and he occasionally returned to film later in his career. He attended Temple University in the 1960s and received his bachelor's degree there in 1971. In 1973, he received a master's degree from the University of Massachusetts, and in 1976, he earned his Doctor of Education degree, also from UMass. His dissertation discussed the use of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids as a teaching tool in elementary schools. Beginning in the 1980s, Cosby produced and starred in a television sitcom, The Cosby Show, which aired from 1984 to 1992 and was rated as the number one show in America for five years, 1984 through 1989. The sitcom highlighted the experiences and growth of an affluent African-American family. Cosby produced the Cosby Show spin-off sitcom A Different World, which aired from 1987 to 1993, starred in the Cosby Mysteries from 1994 to 1995, starred in the sitcom Cosby from 1996 to 2000, and hosted Kids Say the Darndest Things for two seasons, from 1998 to 2000. Numerous sexual assault allegations, the earliest of which date back decades, have been made against Cosby, these allegations did not become highly publicized until 2014. More than 60 women have accused him of rape, drug-facilitated sexual assault, sexual battery, child sexual abuse, and sexual misconduct. Cosby was born on July 12, 1937 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He is one of four sons of Anna Pearl, a maid, and William Henry Cosby Sr., who served as a mess steward in the U.S. Navy. During much of Cosby's early childhood, his father was away from home in Navy service and especially during World War II. As a student, he described himself as a class clown. Cosby was the captain of both the baseball team and the track and field team at Mary Channing Worcester Public School in Philadelphia, as well as the class president. Early on, though, teachers noted his propensity for clowning around rather than studying. At Fitzsimmons Junior High School, Cosby began acting in plays as well as continuing to play sports. Cosby went on to Philadelphia Central High School, a magnet and academically rigorous college prep school, where he played football, basketball and baseball and ran track. In addition, Cosby was working before and after school, selling produce, shining shoes, and stocking shelves at a supermarket to help support his family. He transferred to Germantown High School, but failed the 10th grade. Instead of repeating, he got a job as an apprentice at a shoe repair shop, which he liked, but could not see himself doing the rest of his life. Acting Career In 1956, 
Cosby enlisted in the Navy and served at the Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia, Naval Station Argentia, Newfoundland and at the Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland. During his four years in the Navy, Cosby served as a hospital corpsman working in physical therapy with Navy and Marine Corps personnel injured during the Korean War. He earned his high school equivalency diploma via correspondence courses and was awarded a track and field scholarship to Temple University in 1961. At Temple, he studied physical education while he ran track and played fullback on the college's football team. As Cosby progressed through his undergraduate studies, he continued to hone his talent for humor, joking with fellow enlistees in the service and then with college friends. When he began bartending at a Philadelphia club to earn money, he became more aware of his ability to make people laugh. After entertaining his customers with humor and seeing his tips increase, he proceeded to take his talent to the stage. I Spy Cosby left Temple to pursue a career in comedy. He lined up stand-up jobs at clubs in Philadelphia and then in New York City, where he appeared at the Gaslight Cafe beginning in 1961. He booked dates in cities such as Chicago, Las Vegas, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. In the summer of 1963, he received national exposure on NBC's The Tonight Show. This led to a recording contract with Warner Brothers Records, who, in 1964, released his debut LP Bill Cosby is a Very Funny Fellow. Right, the first of a series of comedy albums. His album to Russell, My Brother, Whom I Slept With was number one on Spin Magazine's list of the 40 greatest comedy albums of all time, calling it stand-up comedy's masterpiece. While many comics of the time were using the growing freedom of that decade to explore material that was controversial and sometimes risque, Cosby was making his reputation with humorous recollections of his childhood. Many Americans wondered about the absence of race as a topic in Cosby's stories. As Cosby's success grew he had to defend his choice of material regularly, as he argued, a white person listens to my act and he laughs and he thinks, yeah, that's the way I see it too. Okay. He's white. I'm Negro. And we both see things the same way. That must mean that we are alike. Right? So I figure this way I'm doing as much for good race relations as the next guy. In 1983, he released the concert film Bill Cosby, himself, it is widely regarded as the greatest comedy concert film ever. Younger well-established comics like Jerry Seinfeld have credited Cosby as an innovator both as a practitioner of the genre of stand-up comedy, as well as a person who paved the way for comics to break into sitcom television. Seinfeld said of Cosby, he opened a door for all of us, for all of the networks to even consider that this was a way to create a character was to take someone who can hold an audience just by being up there and telling their story. He created that. He created the whole idea of taking a quote-unquote comic and developing a TV show just from a persona that you see on stage. Comedian Larry Wilmore also saw a connection between Bill Cosby, himself and the later success of The Cosby Show, saying, it's clear that the concert is the template for the Cosby Show. Fat Albert, The Bill Cosby Show, and the 1970s Cosby performed his first TV stand-up special in 30 years, Bill Cosby, Far From Finished, on Comedy Central on November 23, 2013. 
Cosby's last show of the Far From Finished tour was performed at the Cobb Energy Performing Arts Center in Atlanta, Georgia on May 2, 2015. The Cosby Show in the 1980s In 2014, Cosby was set to release his new stand-up special Bill Cosby 77 on Netflix. The release of the film was cancelled due to allegations of sexual assault. 1990s and 2000s In 1965, Cosby was cast alongside Robert Culp in the I Spy Espionage Adventure series on NBC. I Spy became the first weekly dramatic television series to feature an African American in a starring role. At first, Cosby and NBC executives were concerned that some affiliates might be unwilling to carry the series. At the beginning of the 1965 season, four stations declined the show, they were in Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. Viewers were taken with the show's exotic locales and the authentic chemistry between the stars, and it became one of the ratings hits of that television season. I Spy finished among the 20 most watched shows that year, and Cosby would be honored with three consecutive Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series. When accepting his third Emmy for the show, Cosby told the audience, let the message be known to bigots and racists that they don't count. During the series' run, Cosby continued to do stand-up comedy performances and recorded a half-dozen record albums for Warner Brothers. Records He also began to dabble in singing, recording Silver Throat, Bill Cosby Sings in 1967. 2010s in June 1968, Billboard reported that Cosby had turned down a five-year, 3.5 million U.S. dollar contract renewal offer and would leave the label in August that year to record for his own record label. In July 1968, Cosby narrated Black History, Lost, Stolen, or Strayed a CBS documentary addressing the representation of blacks in popular culture. Andy Rooney wrote the Emmy-awarded script for Bill Cosby to read. Michael Eric Dyson said it was one of the rare exceptions when Cosby took off the gloves and blinders, to discuss race in public with candor and discernment. Due to its popularity and controversial nature, it was rebroadcast less than a month later. Tetragrammaton Records was a division of the Campbell, Silver, Cosby Corporation, the Los Angeles-based production company founded by Cosby, his manager Roy Silver, and filmmaker Bruce Post Campbell. It produced films as well as records, including Cosby's television specials, the Fat Albert cartoon special and series and several motion pictures. CSC hired Artie Mogul as president of the label and Tetragrammaton was fairly active during 1968-69 but it quickly went into the red and ceased trading during 1970. Cosby pursued a variety of additional television projects and appeared as a regular guest host on The Tonight Show and as the star of an annual special for NBC. In 1969, he returned with another series, The Bill Cosby Show, a situation comedy that ran for two seasons. Cosby played a physical education teacher at a Los Angeles high school. While only a modest critical success, the show was a ratings hit, finishing 11th in its first season. Cosby was lauded for using African-American performers such as Lillian Randolph, Moms Mabley, and Rex Ingram as characters. According to commentary on the season 1 DVDs for the show, Cosby was at odds with NBC over his refusal to include a laugh track in the show. After the Bill Cosby show left the air, Cosby resumed his formal education. 
he began graduate work at the University of Massachusetts. For the PBS series The Electric Company, Cosby recorded several segments teaching reading skills to young children. Sexual Assault Allegations In 1972, Cosby received an MA from the University of Massachusetts and was also back in prime time with a variety series, The New Bill Cosby Show. However the show lasted only a season. More successful was a Saturday morning show, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, hosted by Cosby and based on his own childhood. That series ran from 1972 to 1979 and as the new Fat Albert show in 1979, and the adventures of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. In 1984 Cosby wrote the dissertation, an integration of the visual media via Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids into the elementary school curriculum as a teaching aid and vehicle to achieve increased learning. This was his partial fulfillment for his 1976 doctorate in education from the University of Massachusetts. Subsequently, Temple University would grant him his bachelor's degree on the basis of life experience. Political Views Also during the 1970s Cosby and other African-American actors, including Sidney Poitier, joined forces to make some successful comedy films to counter the violent black exploitation films of the era, such as, Uptown Saturday Night in 1974, Let's Do It Again in 1975, and in 1976, Mother, Jugs and Speed, CO starring Raquel Welch and Harvey Keitel. About this last film a Rotten Tomatoes reviewer wrote, Bill Cosby steals the film outright with his hilarious performance as Mother, the streetwise seen it all EMT. Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Southern California, May 8, 1998, Honorary Doctorate from Colgate University, May 22, 1999, he was also the keynote speaker for the commencement ceremony. Honorary Doctorate from Amherst College, May 1999, Honorary Degree from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, 2001, Honorary Degree from the University of Cincinnati in 2001, Honorary Doctorate from Payne College in 2003, Honorary Degree in 2003 from Sisseton Wapaten College for his Contributions to Minority Education, Honorary Doctorate from Westchester University of Pennsylvania during the 2003 graduation ceremony, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree from Yale University, May 26, 2003, Honorary Doctor of Music degree from Berklee College of Music, May 8, 2004. Cosby was also the host of the school's 60th anniversary concert in January 2006, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Johns Hopkins University in 2004, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree from Carnegie Mellon University, May 20, 2007, he was also the keynote speaker for the commencement ceremony. Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree from Virginia Commonwealth University, December 5, 2008. In, Cosby was also in A Piece of the Action with Poitier, and California Suite, a compilation of four Neil Simon plays. Cos. In addition he produced an hour-long variety show featuring puppets, sketches, and musical numbers. It was during this season that ABC decided to take advantage of this phase of Cosby's career, by joining with Filmation producers of Fat Albert to create live-action segments starring Cosby, for the 1964-1971 animated film Journey Back to Ounce, it subsequently aired in syndication.
Cosby was also a regular on children's public television programs starting in the 1970s, hosting the Picture Pages segments that lasted into the early 1980s. Cosby's greatest television success came in September 1984 with the debut of The Cosby Show. Cosby is an advocate for humor that is family-oriented. While working on The Cosby Show he held creative control, CO produced the series and involved himself in every aspect of production. Plots were often based on ideas that Cosby suggested while in meetings with the writing staff. The show had parallels to Cosby's actual family life, like the characters Cliff and Claire Huxtable, Cosby, and his wife Camille were college-educated and financially successful, and they had five children. On the show, Cosby played the role of an obstetrician. Honorary Doctor of Letters from Brown University, awarded May 1985, rescinded September 2015, Honorary Doctor of Laws from Lehigh University, awarded May 1987, rescinded February 2016, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from University of Missouri-Columbia, awarded 1990, rescinded June 2017, Honorary Doctor of Letters from California State Polytechnic University, Pomona, awarded 1992, rescinded November 2015, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Swarthmore College, awarded 1995, rescinded December 2015, Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts from the University of Connecticut, awarded May 18, 1996, rescinded June 2016, Honorary Doctor of Arts from Tufts University, awarded 2000, rescinded October 2015, Honorary Doctorate from Goucher College, awarded 2001, rescinded October 2015, Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts from Fordham University, awarded 2001, rescinded September 2015, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Haverford College, awarded May 2002, Rescinded February 2016, Honorary Doctorate from Drew University, Awarded May 2002. Rescinded October 2015, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Baylor University, Awarded September 4, 2003, at the Spirit Rally for the Baylor and Central Texas Communities, Rescinded October 2015. Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Wilkes University, awarded May 2004, rescinded October 2015, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Oberlin College, awarded May 1, 2010, rescinded December 2015, Honorary Chief Petty Officer in the United States Navy, awarded 2011, revoked December 4, 2014. Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts from the University of San Francisco, awarded May 18, 2012, rescinded September 2015. Honorary Doctor of Letters from Marquette University, awarded May 19, 2013, rescinded September 2015. Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Boston University, Awarded May 18, 2014, rescinded December 2015, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from University of Missouri-Columbia, awarded 1990, rescinded June 2017, Honorary Doctor of Laws from the University of Pennsylvania, awarded 1990, rescinded February 1, 2018. Much of the material from the pilot and first season of The Cosby Show was taken from his video Bill Cosby, himself, released in 1983. The series was an immediate success, debuting near the top of the ratings and staying there for most of its long run. 
personal life. Autumn Jackson Extortion Trial Awards and Honors Emmys In 1987, Cosby attempted to return to film with the spy spoof Leonard Part 6. Although Cosby himself was producer and wrote the story, he realized during production that the film was not going to be what he wanted and publicly denounced it, warning audiences to stay away. In the 1980s Crosby served as an advisor to the Los Angeles Student Film Institute. After the Cosby show went off the air in 1992, Cosby embarked on a number of other projects, including a revival of the classic Groucho Marx game show You Bet Your Life along with the TV movie I Spy Returns and the Cosby Mysteries. In the mid-1990s, he appeared as a detective in black-and-white film noir-themed commercials for Turner Classic Movies. He made appearances in three more films, Ghost Dad, The Meteor Man, and Jack. In addition, he was interviewed in Spike Lee's Four Little Girls, a documentary about the 1963 racist bombing of a church in Birmingham, Alabama. Also in 1996, he started up a new show for CBS, Cosby, again CEO starring Felicia Rasht, his on-screen wife on The Cosby Show. Cosby CEO produced the show for Carsey Werner Productions. It centered on Cosby as Hilton Lucas, an iconoclastic senior citizen who tries to find a new job after being downsized and, in the meantime, gets on his wife's nerves. Madeline Kahn CEO starred as Rashta's goofy business partner Pauline. Cosby was hired by CBS to be the official spokesman of the WWJ TV during an advertising campaign from 1995 to 1998. Cosby hosted a CBS special, Kids Say the Darndest Things on February 6, 1995, which was followed after as a full season show with Cosby as host, from January 9, 1998, to June 23, 2000. After four seasons, Cosby was cancelled. Its last episode aired April 28, 2000. Kids Say the Darndest Things was terminated the same year. A series for preschoolers, Little Bill, made its debut on Nickelodeon in 1999. The network renewed the popular program in November 2000. In 2001, Cosby's agenda included the publication of a new book, as well as delivering the commencement addresses at Morris Brown College, Ohio State University, and at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Also that year, he signed a deal with 20th Century Fox to develop a live-action feature film centering on the popular Fat Albert character from his 1970s cartoon series. Fat Albert was released in theaters in December 2004. In May 2007, he spoke at the commencement of High Point University. In the summer of 2009, Cosby hosted a comedy gala at Montreal's Just for Laughs, which is the largest comedy festival in the world. Cosby received the National Football Foundation's gold medal in 2010. Grammys A new NBC show, that was scheduled for summer or autumn 2015, created by Mike O'Malley and Mike Sikowitz and to have been produced by The Cosby Show's Tom Warner, was set to feature Cosby as Jonathan Franklin, the patriarch of a multi-generational family. On November 19, 2014, NBC scrapped Cosby's new show after accusations resurfaced that he sexually assaulted women. Reruns of The Cosby Show have been cancelled as a result of the sexual assault allegations against Cosby. On November 19, 
2014, TV Land and NBC both ended their relationships with Cosby. TV Land announced that it was pulling reruns from its schedule and also removing clips of the show from its website. In December 2014, the Magic Johnson owned Aspire removed the series from its lineup. In July 2015, broadcast network Bounce TV pulled reruns, and Bet S Centric stopped airing reruns. In late 2014, Creative Artists Agency, Cosby's agency since 2012, dropped him as a client. Honorary Degrees Rescinded Honorary Degrees Works Cosby has been the subject of highly publicized sexual assault allegations, dating from the mid-1960s, and Cosby has been accused by more than 50 women of either rape, drug-facilitated sexual assault, sexual battery, child sexual abuse, and slash or sexual misconduct. Earlier sexual assault allegations against Cosby became more public after an October 2014 accusation as part of an onstage performance by comedian Hannibal Buress drew attention, and many additional claims were made after that date. The dates of the alleged incidents span from 1965 to 2008 across 10 U.S. states and one Canadian province. Cosby has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. In a November 2014 response to a question about the allegations, Cosby said, I don't talk about it. Cosby has declined to publicly discuss the accusations in past interviews. However, he told Florida Today, people shouldn't have to go through that and shouldn't answer to innuendos. In May 2015, he said, I have been in this business 52 years and I've never seen anything like this. Reality is a situation and I can't speak. Most of the alleged acts fall outside the statutes of limitations for criminal legal proceedings, but numerous civil lawsuits have been brought against Cosby. As of November 2015, Eight related civil lawsuits are active against Cosby, including two that also target Cosby's lawyer and one that also implicates his wife and manager Camille Cosby. In a December 11, 2015 interview, high-profile attorney Gloria Allred who is representing 33 alleged victims said that there are more alleged victims who have contacted her and that some of those who had contacted her would be coming forward. In July 2015, court records from Andrea Constan's 2005 civil lawsuit against Cosby were unsealed and released to the public. In his testimony, Cosby admitted that he engaged in casual sex with a series of young women, he also testified that the encounters involved use of the sedative quaaludes. Cosby also admitted that his use of drugs in the 1970s was illegal. In the wake of these allegations, numerous organizations have severed ties with the comedian, and previously awarded honors and titles have been revoked. Reruns of The Cosby Show and other shows featuring Cosby have also been pulled from syndication by many organizations. More than a dozen colleges and universities have rescinded his honorary degrees. In an attempt to explain the backlash against Cosby, Adweek reporter Jason Lynch noted that the media landscape has changed considerably and has now been joined by the far less forgiving social media arena. On December 30, 2015, Cosby was charged with sexual assault in Pennsylvania and a warrant for his arrest was issued. Cosby reported to court and was arraigned on three charges of felony aggravated indecent assault. On May 24, 2016, a Pennsylvania judge ruled that there was enough evidence for the case to go to trial. Cosby remained free on $1 million bail until his trial.
Each charge carries a maximum sentence of 10 years, if Cosby is convicted, the sentences could be served either concurrently or consecutively as determined by the sentencing judge. Cosby went to trial at age 79 on June 5, 2017. The case ended in a mistrial on June 17, when the jurors were deadlocked. Discography On June 23, 2017, a juror from the trial told CNN that a major cause for the deadlock was confusion over contradictory statements made by Andrea Constand when she testified during the trial and that the prosecution presented no real new evidence. Cosby was originally scheduled to be retried on the alleged sexual assault charges against Constand on November 6, 2017. However, Judge Stephen O'Neill, who presided over the first trial, later granted Cosby's request to postpone the retrial until at least sometime in the spring of 2018 after the comedian hired a new defense team. No date has been set for the second trial and Judge O'Neill acknowledged to Cosby's new defense team that his proposal to hold the second trial in mid-March or early April was loosely fixed. Cosby received an award at the celebration of the 50th anniversary commemoration of the Brown v. Board of Education ruling a ruling of the U.S. Supreme Court that outlawed racial segregation in schools. A little later in May 2004, he made public remarks that were critical of African Americans who put higher priorities on sports, fashion, and acting hard than on education self-respect, and self-improvement. He pleaded for African-American families to educate their children on the many different aspects of American culture. In the Pound Cake speech, Cosby asked that African-American parents teach their children better morals at a younger age. As reported in The Washington Times, Cosby told reporters during a special session of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's 34th Annual Legislative Conference that parenting needs to come to the forefront. If you need help and you don't know how to parent, we want to be able to reach out and touch you. Richard Leiby of The Washington Post reported, Bill Cosby was anything but politically correct in his remarks Monday night at a Constitution Hall bash commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Brown v. Board of Education decision. Cosby again came under sharp criticism and was again largely unapologetic for his stance when he made similar remarks during a speech at a July 1 meeting commemorating the anniversary of Brown v. Board of Education. During that speech, he admonished apathetic blacks for not assisting or concerning themselves with the individuals who are involved with crime or have counterproductive aspirations. He further described those who needed attention as blacks who had forgotten the sacrifices of those in the civil rights movement. In 2005, Georgetown University sociology professor Michael Eric Dyson wrote a book, is Bill Cosby right? Or has the black middle class lost its mind? In the book, Dyson wrote that Cosby was overlooking larger social factors that reinforce poverty and associated crime, factors such as deteriorating schools, stagnating wages, dramatic shifts in the economy, offshoring and downsizing, chronic underemployment, and job and capital flight. Dyson suggested that Cosby's comments betray CLAS cyst, elitist viewpoints rooted in generational warfare. Cornell West defended Cosby and his remarks, saying, he's speaking out of great compassion and trying to get folk to get on the right track, cause we've got some brothers and sisters who are not doing the right things, just like in times in our own lives, we don't do the right thing. He is trying to speak honestly and freely and lovingly, and I think that's a very positive thing. 
In a 2008 interview, Cosby mentioned Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, Oakland, California, Philadelphia, and Springfield, Massachusetts among the cities where crime was high and young African American men were being murdered and jailed in disproportionate numbers. Cosby stood his ground against criticism and affirmed that African American parents were continuing to fail to inculcate proper standards of moral behavior. Cosby has also been vocally critical of conservative Republican politicians in regard to their views on socioeconomic and racial issues. In a 2013 CNN interview regarding voting rights, Cosby stated this Republican Party is not the Republican Party of 1863, of Abraham Lincoln, abolitionists, and slavery, is not good. I think it's important for us to look at the underlying part of it. What is the value of it? Is it that some people are angry because my people no longer want to work for free? Cosby married Camille Olivia Hanks on January 25, 1964. Together, they had five children, Erica, Aaron, Ennis, Ensa, and Evan. Their only son, Ennis, was murdered on January 16, 1997, while changing a flat tire on the side of Interstate 405 in Los Angeles. Cosby's daughter Ensa died of renal disease on February 23, 2018, while awaiting a kidney transplant. The Cosbys have three grandchildren. Comedy Albums Music Albums Cosby is a Protestant. He maintains homes in Shelburne, Massachusetts, and Cheltenham, Pennsylvania. Cosby hosted the Los Angeles Playboy Jazz Festival from 1979 to 2012. Known as a jazz drummer, he can also be seen playing bass guitar with Jerry Lewis and Sammy Davis. Jr. on Hugh Hefner's 1970s talk show. His story, The Regular Way, was featured in Playboy's December 1968 issue. Cosby has become an active member of the Jazz Foundation of America. Cosby became involved with the foundation in 2004. For several years, he has been a featured host for its annual benefit. A Great Night in Harlem, at the Apollo Theater in New York City. Cosby has stated many times in his stand-up shows that kids these days don't know what the jazz is all about. Compilations Cosby and his wife have collected over 300 works of African American art since 1967. The works went on display in Conversations, an exhibit at the National Museum of African Art in 2014. The show became controversial for mounting as sexual assault allegations against Cosby became prominent. Singles Filmography Television Film Books Sources Cosby is a supporter of his alma mater, Temple University, particularly its men's basketball team, whose games Cosby frequently attended prior to his arrest. He is also a member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity, he was initiated in the fraternity's Beta Alpha Alpha graduate chapter in White Plains, New York, in 1988. In 2016, Cosby's attorneys reported that the comedian is now legally blind. In an April 2017 interview with the National Newspaper Publishers Association, both Cosby and a former publicist of his confirmed this, noting he lost his sight at some point in 2015. During Autumn Jackson's extortion trial in July 1997, Cosby testified that he made private payments to Sean Upshaw, 
a woman who had briefly been his lover in Las Vegas during the early 1970s. Upshaw later told Cosby that he was the father of her daughter, Autumn Jackson. Cosby denies being the father and said that he gave Upshaw a total of about $100,000 because he did not want her to publicly reveal the affair. The then 22-year-old Autumn Jackson was sentenced to 26 months in jail for trying to extort 40 million US dollars from Cosby. In the trial and subsequent appeal, the courts held that Jackson's belief that she was Cosby's child even if sincere was irrelevant to the question of her guilt. The courts stated that the mere fact that she was Cosby's child would not have entitled her to the $40 million she demanded, and therefore the demand was extortionate, whether or not she believed herself to be Cosby's daughter. Although both Jackson and Cosby stated at various times that they were willing to undergo DNA testing to determine Jackson's paternity, the two sides never reached an agreement as to when and how to perform the test. After Jackson's conviction, Cosby provided a blood sample for testing, but Jackson refused to participate. Outstanding continued performance by an actor in a leading role in a dramatic series Primetime Emmys, 1966 I Spy Alexander Scott, 1967 I Spy Alexander Scott, 1968 I Spy Alexander Scott, Outstanding Variety or Musical Program Primetime Emmys, 1969 The Bill Cosby Special Best Comedy Performance Grammy Awards, 1965 I Started Out as a Child, 1966 Why Is There Air, 1967 Wonderfulness, 1968 Revenge, 1969 To Russell, My Brother, Whom I Slept With, 1970 Sports, 1987 Those of You With or Without Children, You'll Understand. Best Recording for Children Grammy Awards, 1971 The Electric Company Cast Member, 1972 Bill Cosby Talks to Kids About Drugs. Cosby has been awarded at least 57 honorary degrees since 1985. Following numerous allegations of sexual assault made against Cosby, a number of his honorary degrees were rescinded or revoked. They include, in order of rescission, 